Hey and welcome back lovely people. The aim of this channel is to start discussions. I don't want to do pseudoscience, I don't want to do conspiracy theories, I want to discuss real stuff. But occasionally <laughs> viewers send me things that are intriguing and worth looking at. This is one of these subjects. <laughs> my viewers said, Professor, look at scalar technology and Nikola Tesla. My overall view on the whole Nikola Tesla thing is that he was brilliant and it was a long, long time ago. The world has moved on. We have iPhones and have sent people to the moon and we have quantum physics and we have Einstein. Tesla was a genius from nearly two centuries ago and he had some good ideas that were ahead of its time, but whether they actually translate into the modern world as reality and aren't just kind of early science ideas, I doubt it. One of these Tesla ideas, which is often discussed, is his term scalar technology. Now, let's just go for it and describe the full malarkey, <laughs> a good British word. Scalar technology is where you can change the atomic structure of the entire planet and in an instant flash, every atom becomes hotter than the sun and vaporizes everything. It's the ultimate terror weapon. And whether it can be used locally or globally, we don't know, but he implied that he had this kind of technology and it could be used. All right, I don't think it's real, but <laughs> there are one or two intriguing elements on scalar weapons, which kind of looks like people were messing around with them and could have come up with something. Here's that story. So in the 1980s, I was working for the BBC in their kind of news and current affairs department on a, um, a kind of flagship program called Panorama, which is, you know, doing weekly, very good news stories. And we did a lot on the Cold War. I remember in the 1980s, as a very junior person, I was obviously very young, <laughs> um, that one of the reporters did this film on uh, SALT or strategic arms limitation talks and how they were deeply worried about Soviets having a dome of light technology and how this had been spotted and was investigated by the West as a you know an arms limitation breaking kind of weapon and they didn't know what it was i just remember dome of light dome of light dome of light it now comes up that the dome of light theory is possibly a scalar weapon that was being messed around with by the soviets whether it was a scalar weapon i'm not saying but there were sightings of domes of light associated with um, arms limitation uh, weapons that were being fired to, into destruction. Um, these uh, observations were by US spy planes and a couple of launches of these Soviet missiles that were being destroyed, domes of light appeared. And there's also evidence that there was um, large bangs heard off the west coast of the US and maybe in the Netherlands. I really don't know, but at the time, the Dome of Light was taken seriously. People who are interested in scalar technology and Tesla also point to this reference by Nikita Khrushchev in a talk he made to the West in the late 50s, early 60s, I'm not quite sure, where he, first of all, very well quoted saying that communism will bury capitalism. Um, it was possibly badly translated. I don't think he meant that communists will dig a hole and throw um, the CEO of Amazon into it. Who knows? <laughs> but 
He also, in a famous, Nick, this is Khrushchev, in a famous speech, said that he had a technology that was so terrifying that he could destroy the entire world, a kind of doomsday weapon. You know, and we've had um, films about doomsday weapons, like um, Doctor Strangelove. And so I think it was kind of taken seriously. And also out of context, I mean, what was his doomsday, doomsday weapon? Was it just a large nuclear bomb, which they had? And of course, the Tesla conspiracy people like to think it was a scalar weapon. I don't know, but he certainly did imply, Khrushchev did imply that he had some terror weapon which could destroy the entire planet, possibly in a flash. I think I'm pushing my luck there, but whatever. He had something in the Dome of Light. So what I'm going to do is read you the transcript of the US CIA, US Air Force, pilots who witnessed the two domes of light in the um, Soviet Union. They were flying out of um, an Aleutian Islands uh, in Alaska to witness these tests, and they saw these domes of light. What they were, I don't know. I'm not saying that they are scalar weapons. They could have been some kind of um, uh, uh, satellite a distraction system, maybe when Soviet missiles take off, if you could make an enormous white flash of light, it would disrupt the uh, West's spy satellites to know where the um, rockets were launched from. That's the most likely uh, theory. Also, it might just be an, an oral um, uh, phenomenon, you know, a natural phenomenon, or it might have been a scalar weapon. <laughs> I'm not saying it was because. I don't like conspiracy theories, but I also find it really interesting, and I think you will because the truth is out there somewhere, somewhere. I'm still looking for it. Bye. Roger Hopkins, the pilot aboard. RC-135S said sometime during late 1988, most likely October or November, my crew from the 24th Strategic Reconnaissance Squadron, 6th Strategic Wing of Allison Air Force Base, Alaska, was at Shemya Air Force Base, Alaska for a routine two-week deployment during a sortie in the sensitive area east of the Kamchatka Peninsula near the USSR, we were notified that the Soviets had launched an SS-20 Sabre missile towards the Kura test range. This was part of the shoot to destruction provision of the 1987 treaty between the US and the Soviet Union. It called for the destruction of 72 of the 650 Soviet intermediate range ballistic missiles by launching them from a known test facility at a known impact site with unimpeded observation by national technical means. In this case, I was flying the national technical means. It was an RC-135S Cobra. Using a variety of optical and telemetry sensors, the RC-135S collected measurements and signature intelligence to verify compliance with the international arms agreements and to assess the maturity and development of foreign ballistic missile systems. As our crew prepared for the re-entry of the SS-20's three re-entry vehicles, we climbed to our prescribed collection altitude and began timing track to ensure that the right side of the airplane, where all the sensors were located, was pointed towards the re-entry event, the autopilot was connected, and the stellar inertial Doppler system for precise positioning within six feet of the airplane was used to confirm our presence in international airspace well beyond the Soviet territorial limit of 12 nautical miles. The stars were out that night, and I don't recall any moonlight, so we anticipated a nice light show from the RVs as they re-entered the atmosphere. As with any take or collection, there was a general buzz of excitement as the back-end crew verified their sensors and recorders were fully operational. The other pilot and I looked out ahead and to the left to clear for any potential conflicting traffic. 
We flew using the International Civil Aviation Organization, IACO, due regard procedures, where the pilots were responsible for the safety of our aircraft and others it might encounter. As we waited for the re-entry and looked for other traffic, we noticed what appeared to be a translucent, milky white wall moving from the left over the USSR to the right towards the northern Pacific Ocean. It covered the entire sky from ground up to as far as we could see. It moved very quickly, far faster than crossing other aircraft traffic, and it rapidly was approaching us. The wall of light passed across the flight path and then continued eastwards, leaving the empty and dark sky in its wake. Our program time turn arrived and we began to bank to the left to collect the RV data. Once we rolled out southbound, the wall of light was no longer visible. After the mission, the other pilot and I discussed what we had seen. We were convinced it wasn't a hallucination, but it was something that we had never seen before. Amazingly, I saw the same phenomenon at another SS-20 launch. What we saw became known as the Dome of Light. The US government responded. Jesse Helms, the North Carolina Senator said, hidden SS-20s could be used for a surprise party. Surprise party means a first strike. He went on to say, I worry that this weapon is a sea change and might make the treaty dead on arrival. Thank you.